Hello, Altoona area sixth graders. I am Mrs. Lang, and I'm going to be teaching you a lesson today on theme for ELA. Now, when I think of theme, I think while I'm watching TV shows, while I'm reading a book, something that the author wants me to learn. Um, so I was thinking about Survivor. When I'm watching the show Survivor, uh, some of you may have seen it before, some of you may have never seen it before, but you probably get the idea. A bunch of contestants are dropped off in the middle of nowhere and have to outwit, outplay, outlast each other in order to be the lone survivor in the end and win a lot of money. Um, I think of that show, when I'm watching that show, I think, what are the topics or the motifs that keep popping up throughout? Now you have to kind of outwit and maybe even lie to each other. And those, if you've ever seen the show, almost weekly, People are trying to lie to each other or go behind each other's backs. Um, and same thing with outplay. They're kind of outplaying each other to be the winner of the game. Now, those things are topics or motifs. Some might say sometimes that those are the themes of the stories, but that is not true. Those are just the topics that keep popping up throughout the story. And a topic and a motif are very similar in that it's a one to two letter description of, of t things that keep popping up and they keep coming up. And those are going to be what we can use to help us develop our theme. Now, earlier I said a theme is the message that the author is trying to convey throughout the story. It's the lesson that they want you to learn. Now, it can be one lesson, it can be multiple lessons, but remember the author is trying to get you to understand those things. So you have to ask yourself, what does the author want me to learn? So when we're thinking about Survivor, some of the possible themes could be the author, Mark Burnett, he's the creator of the show, shows us that if you work hard, you can accomplish your goals. Or the author wants us to understand that people will do what they need to do in order to survive. Or the author, Mark Burnett, teaches us that sometimes you have to go through hard times to come out on top. Or possibly the author wants us to know that hard work pays off. I want to look at this, this last one right here. Hard work pays off. Because if you look at each of these sentences that I created, the first part of the sentence the author wants us to know, or the author wants us to understand, or the author shows, or the author teaches us. That's just a sentence starter that you could use for probably any uh, sentence that you start for your theme. The end of the sentence, the part that I underlined, is the actual theme of the story that you want to come, that you want to portray. So if we looked at hard work pays off, think of other stories that you've read before that could possibly have that theme for hard work pays off. Think for a moment. Do you have one? Now I think of one of my favorites and my Ebner kids are going to know exactly what I'm talking about. Uh, my favorites are Hunger Games. So when I'm thinking of that and I'm thinking of that theme, hard work pays off. I could definitely use it for the Hunger Games because Katniss Everdeen has to work really hard during the Hunger Games in order to survive. And I'm not going to tell you how it pays off because if you haven't read the stories, you should really read them. They're really good stories. Uh, but I also showed you evidence that could support that theme. So here are some sentence starters that you could use for your theme sentences. The author teaches us that, the author shows us that, or the author wants us to understand that. It's always important to note who your author is, especially in the stories that you're reading. You want to give them credit for your thoughts, and you want to give them credit for steering you in the right direction of the lesson that they want you to learn. Okay? So some steps to follow uh, to find your theme. You want to finish the text. I know that you really want to jump right out and probably try to figure out what the theme is, but that's not really going to help you. If you have an idea for the theme, write it down. You should not worry if you have to edit or change the theme at all, because that's the important part of reading, is you're not constantly married or glued to one idea. Your ideas can change throughout the stories as they should while you're reading. But while you're reading, you can jot down topics or motifs that you feel like keep coming up throughout the story. 
create a list of those topics or motifs, they will end up helping you create your theme. And then pick a topic and write your theme sentence. Again, use one of those sentence starters um, from earlier on. Uh, so let's try this. I want you to keep in mind, though, that themes should not include any characters' names. They should not include any specific events in, in your story, and they should not include the titles of your books. You should be able to have them generic or plain or vague enough that you could actually take your theme and see if it would match any other story that you've read before. So let's try this. So we are gonna watch the video text for the birds, one of my favorite Pixar shorts. And I want you to jot down some ideas that you're having throughout what, uh, maybe the topics that keep coming up, or even if you have an idea for a theme, jot that down while you're watching the video. And then afterwards, we're gonna talk about it. All right, enjoy. Always my favorite. All right, so let's look at that. Uh, hopefully you wrote down and jotted down some ideas while we were watching the video. So possible themes for the video text for the birds. Now, before, while you were watching, you could have jotted down some possible motifs or topics. Teasing definitely kept coming up throughout the whole video. Also isolation, where they were isolating the big bird away from the little birds and then talking about them, talking about the big bird. And then also inclusion, that big bird just seemed to want to be included in what the little birds were doing. And also acceptance, uh, the big bird just wanted to be accepted by the other birds. So those things kept popping up throughout. Now, taking those, you can create some possible themes. So the possible themes that I came up with, and again, yours can be different as long as you have evidence to prove it. Um, so the author shows us that it is not wise to make fun of others. My evidence for that theme, it is not wise to make fun of others, is when the birds are pecking at the big bird, they eventually get thrown off the wire because of how mean they were to him. Um, a little bit of physics there too. But uh, that kind of happens to the little birds because they were doing something mean. Uh, the next one that I had is the author teaches us that including others is more important than leaving them out. 
Uh, the evidence I have for that theme is when the big bird wanted to join the little birds on the wire, they were being mean to him and didn't want him to be part of the group. And so that's why it's, it's important to include others instead of leaving them out. And we know how that happened and how that ended for the little birds. So that's basically how you find your theme. And that's what you're going to be doing for today's assignment. You need to identify the theme from the, a book that you're currently reading. Now, I know some of you have not finished the book, but you can get an idea. And remember, you can always change or modify your idea as you're reading and as you find out more throughout your story. Don't forget to cite the evidence that you have to support that theme because it's very important to know where that theme's coming from. You can't just say, oh, I think he's nice, or oh, the big bird wanted to do something. Um, those aren't themes, first of all, and you have to have evidence to support what you're saying. Remember to keep your themes vague and do not include any of the characters in those themes. Remember also, read for 30 minutes every day and log your reading. Some of you may not have reading logs and it's okay. You can just take a piece of paper, write down the title of your book, either how many minutes a day or how many pages you've been reading as well, and the date. Also complete your daily activity. Thanks again for watching and see you again next, next week.